Good morning, guys. Today is March 30th, 2020, and this is going to be our Leaders Workshop lesson for today. We're going to continue, um, I'm going to continue using this book as our demonstration book or our demo book. So I'm going to show you a few, uh, another strategy that I want you to focus on today um, with the book, I Survived the San Francisco Earthquake 1906. Hopefully you've been watching these videos so you um, are familiar with what we've been reading, what we've read so far. So I'm going to start off by sharing my screen. So one second as I do that. And here we go. So here are our learning intentions for today. Today we're going to look at the relationship between, and I'm going to make this a little bit bigger, present mode. Um, today we are going to look at the relationship between the main character and secondary characters in our chapter books. Our success criteria, how do we know we're successful? Well, we can write a paragraph describing the relationship between the main character and the secondary character using textual evidence. Our language intention, I use words like main character and secondary character, and then our social intention as it's been for these last few weeks is I do the work even when no one is looking. So let's take a look at our recipe card. So number one is that you want to read from your book club chapter book or any chapter book you're currently reading. Um, some of you might have already finished your um, book club book, which is great. And if you have, you can use it for this um, for this assignment or for this task, or if you have another chapter book, you can use another chapter book as well. So number one is to read, and then number two is I read, I'm gonna pause and I'm gonna think to myself, what is the relationship like between the main character and the secondary character? Remember a secondary character is not the main character, right? It might be um, some of the other characters that are mentioned in the book. And for one of our lessons previously, we talked about three different types of secondary characters. Sometimes we find in books that the secondary character might be a sidekick. Um, it might be a challenger, right? Like more of like a villain or more like somebody who challenges the main character, or it could be like an advisor. So like if you think back to Because of When Dixie, I would um, definitely consider Winn-Dixie as Opal's sidekick. A challenger would be maybe Amanda Wilkinson, right? Because she doesn't necessarily like Opal. Um, she's always like making a face at her. And then an advisor would be like Gloria Dump. She's always giving advice. She's always giving um, Opal kind of, you know, advice, like kind of giving her life advice on what to do and, and talking to her about her, um, her situation with her, you know, her mom not being in her life. So remember, as you read, you're pausing and you're thinking to yourself, what is the relationship like between the main character and the secondary character? So I'm going to read from chapter four. And as I'm reading, you can take notes, like, um, just think about what is the relationship like between the characters mentioned. In the last chapter, we learned that um, Leo, who's the main character, right? He's very poor, he works um, selling newspapers. His, his, dad's, his dad died, right? He recently died um, and the earthquake just happened. Um, those two boys, Fletch and Wilkie, have stolen not only his money, but the gold nugget that he had. And the gold nugget meant more to him than just money. It meant um, a memory of his grandfather. So he's really heartbroken. And he basically thinks that there's this kid that he told about, he told um, or shared the story of the gold nugget with, and his name is Morris, and he feels like it's probably his fault. He probably blabbed and went and told everybody. And so that's what happened in the last chapter. So this is chapter four. Leo had no idea how much time passed, and then a voice calling his name woke him from his daze. Papa? Leo, Leo Ross, where are you? Leo groaned to himself, Morris. Why did that kid constantly pester him? From the first day they'd met, Morris had acted like they were long lost brothers. They both lived in the same boarding house. Leo by himself in a tiny basement room, Morris upstairs with his uncle, a sweaty man with a huge stomach who yelled at the little girls when they played dolls on the boarding house steps. Every day when Leo got home, Morris was waiting for him front door. 
The kid worked at a grocery, but he spent every spare second at the public library. He always had some new fact to share with Leo. Leo, you know that, you know that, that rat that lives under the front steps? Did you know its Latin name is Radis Radis? Leo, did you know that this neighborhood used to be a swamp? They filled it in with garbage and old wood and then built these buildings. Leo, did you know that the San Francisco Library has a million books? In Leo's heart, he knew that Morris just wanted to be pals, but Leo didn't need any friends. He especially didn't need a friend like Morris. A skinny twerp who didn't know when to shut up. A kid like that wouldn't do Leo any good. What had Leo been thinking when he showed Morris his gold? He thought back to that night a few weeks ago when Leo had seen Morris sitting alone on the steps of the cigar store near the boarding house. At first, Leo figured he could sneak by and escape Morris for one day, but something was wrong with the kid, and Leo just couldn't walk by without seeing what it was. It took Leo some time to get Morris to spit out what was wrong, that his uncle was hardly ever home, that he gambled all of his money away, including the few dimes a day Morris earned at the market. I have to get out of here, Morris said. My ma has cousins in New York City. I met them once. You love them, Leo. They're both teachers. They said I could go to their school. They always said I was welcome there anytime. Why don't you just go, Leo said. And finally, Leo could live in peace. How, Morris said, I don't have the money to get on a train. My uncle just laughs when I mention it. I'm trapped here. There was no cheering Morris up until Leo reached into his pocket and took out his gold. He handed it to Morris like Papa used to hand it to him. Morris's eyes almost popped out of his head. Leo told him about Grandpa and how people laughed when he used to talk about one day crossing the wild country by himself. Of course, Leo knew that Morris was nothing like Grandpa, but the story worked like a charm. What was Morris doing out on the streets looking for him now? Couldn't he mind his own business for one day? Morris was the reason he just lost his gold to Fletch and Wilkie. The reason he was lying bleeding in the alley. Morris is the last person Leo wanted to see. Leo kept quiet, hoping that Morris would move along, but no, Morris kept at it, and suddenly there he was, crouched down next to Leo. I've been looking everywhere for you, he said. I knew something must have happened. Morris took out a handkerchief and started wiping the caked blood from Leo's face. Whoever did this to you, Morris fumed, I swear I'll get them. Leo would have laughed, but his jaw was too sore. It was Fletch Sykes and Loki Barnes, Leo mumbled. They stole my gold. Morris gasped. You were the only person who knew about it, Leo added. I didn't tell Fletch Sykes about your gold, Morris said. But you told someone, right? Leo said. Morris's shoulders slumped. I might have mentioned it to some kids at the market, he said. It was such a great story, and I, well, it really got their attention. Leo shook his head. The kid was so desperate for friends, he spilled Leo's most important secret. He should clobber him. But no person could look sorrier than Morris looked now. Leo sighed. Being mad at Morris wasn't going to get his gold back. He let Morris help him stand up. Together, they made their way back to the boarding house. Morris jabbered the entire way. I'm going to help you get that gold back, he said, as they stepped through the front door. It will be sold by tomorrow, Leo said. Morris frowned. I know, Morris said. That's why we need to get it back tonight. We, Leo said. Now he had to laugh. Morris really thought he stood a chance next to Fletch and Wilkie. Of course they won't just give it back, Morris said, ignoring Leo's question. We have to trick them somehow. Leo looked at Morris, and right then Morris didn't look like such a skinny little twerp. There was a look on his face, a thoughtful and stubborn kind of look that reminded Leo of the way President Roosevelt appeared on the front page of today's paper. The only thing missing was the bushy mustache. But what did Morris really know about the world? There were no books in the library about kids like Fletch and Mulkey. Leo thanked Morris, and before Morris could say another word, Leo hurried down to his tiny basement room, slamming the door behind him. So that's the end of chapter four. And now I'm gonna look back at my recipe card. I already have some information in my head about the relationship between Leo and Morris. Morris being the secondary character and Leo is our main character. I want you, before we even start writing a paragraph, just to write down what you think so far. So I'm gonna just grab a pen over here to start writing. And I want you guys to write what I'm writing in green. Actually, let me change it to blue. So, I think 
I think Leo feels mm, towards Morris because, and there might be more than one feeling he's feeling towards Morris. At the beginning of the chapter, we see maybe one kind of feeling, and then at the end, we see another. But I want you to just write, I think Leo feels mm, towards Morris because mm, just one sentence. And then when we come back, we're going to try to write a paragraph together. All right, and so hopefully you wrote something about Leo and how he feels towards Morris. You might have said like Leo feels angry or feels anger towards Morris because Morris spilled the beans, right? That means he, um, or he let the cat out of the bag. That's another idiom, right? Like he basically revealed Leo's like biggest secret and he was highly upset with him. But then we start to kind of see a change because Leo sees that Morris really wants um, to help him at the end. And he kind of feels maybe sorry for him. It doesn't say he feels sorry, but maybe that's why he just talks to him because he notices Morris is alone. He doesn't have many friends. He tries to talk to people to, you know, to have friends. And he doesn't like being in San Francisco. He wants to go to New York. Um, so the next part we're going to do is that we're going to explain our thinking by writing a paragraph. And I'm going to just copy, I'm going to stop annotating for a second. I am going to copy this, um, our sentence frames for our paragraph. And we're going to add a new page so that we can write together. So open up your reader's workshop notebook. And just go to the next little clean section. I'm putting this on the side so I can see it. And I can use it as a guide to write my paragraph. But I'm definitely going to write my paragraph somewhere else on this side. And you're going to do the same with me. And you're thinking with me as well. If you think of a better word to describe something from the book, go for it, right? That's what, what writing is all about. And what reading is all about is to express our thinking. Um, just make this a little bit bigger, maybe. All right, so we're going to start by indenting our paragraph. That means leaving a space. When we indent a paragraph, it lets the reader know um, that it's a paragraph, right? It's the beginning of a new paragraph. So we're going to write the relationship between Leo and Morris is hmm, thinking. Uh, the relationship between Leo and Morris is a little questionable. And what I mean by that, it's like, we don't know if they're friends or not, right? Like, it's kind of questionable. It's a question in my mind what kind of friendship they have. So let's start there. The, the relationship between Leo and Morris is a little questionable. Um, the relationship, let's write, I believe the relationship It's questionable because on page, so now I'm going to go back to the text. I already have my text open. Mm, let's see. Um, let's see. Let's find some evidence from our book. I'm trying to go back. Um, well, here we go. So I believe the relationship is questionable because on page 14, Morris is looking for Leo. And when Leo hears Morris, it says, so I'm going to go back. It says Leo groaned himself. Morris, right? He realizes it's Morris and then he says, why did that kid constantly pester him? Why did that kid constantly pester him? To pester means to bother. Let me see if there's anything else I want to add from that page. Constantly pester him from the first day, 
from the first day they'd met. First day they'd met. Let's see. Morris had acted like they were long lost brothers. Morris acted like they were long lost brothers. Let me read so far what we have, because that's a quote. So the relationship between Neil and Morris is a little questionable. I believe the relationship is questionable because on page 14, Morris is looking for Leo and then Neil hears Morris. It says, Leo groan to himself, Morris. Why did that kid constantly pester him? From the first day they met, Morris acted like they were long lost brothers. So um, Leo doesn't like Morris very much but I think he feels bad for him. And that's why he chooses to talk to Morris. Um, however, he does find him annoying. And how do I know this, right? Well, because in the text, he's always saying like, how, you know, Morris feels like they're long lost brother. So however, he does find him annoying he doesn't, Leo does not want a relationship or a friendship with Morris, yet he does feel, hmm, yet he does feel sorry for him. And we see this when Leo originally told him, originally told Morris the story of the gold nugget. And we see kind of throughout this chapter that his feelings, like he still thinks Morris is annoying, but he, I think appreciates, right? Appreciates that Morris wants to get the gold back. So even though Leo is upset at Morris for having told the story of the gold nugget to other neighborhood kids, we see Leo's feelings change a little bit towards Morris because at the end of the chapter, he notices Morris is, Morris wants to get the gold back and feels awful about what happened to Leo. All right, so I'm going to read this just to double check. The relationship between Leo and Morris is a little questionable. I believe the relationship is questionable because on page 14, Morris is looking for Leo, and when Leo hears Morris, it says, Leo groans himself. Morris, why did that kid constantly pester him? From the first day they met, Morris acted like they were long lost brothers. Leo doesn't like Morris very much, but I think he feels bad for him, and that's why he chooses to talk to Morris. However, he does find him annoying. Leo does not want a friendship with Morris, yet he does feel sorry for him, and we see this when Leo originally told Morris the story of the gold nugget. Even though Leo's upset at Morris for having told the story of the gold nugget to other neighborhood kids, we see Leo's feelings change a little bit towards Morris, because at the end of the chapter, he notices Morris wants to get the gold back and feels awful about what happened to Leo. That's a good paragraph. And that is the kind of work that we want you guys to do. Um, and that's a deep, deep analysis of how he feels about a character. I know, my friends, it might seem like a lot to write a chapter just about the relationship between a main character and the secondary character, but it's such a good skill for you to build because in fourth grade, you're gonna be doing the same. You're gonna be writing an essay about um, characters of, of a fiction book, right, from a fictional book, and analyzing things about them, and analyzing the relationship between characters. So I really want you guys to, one, make sure you wrote this down so you have a good guide for yourself, but also I want you to try it. 
Remember, if you're reading a book, a chapter book from our book club, it's, it's a perfect book to do this or another chapter book that you might have at home or from Epic. Whatever you use, make sure it's an English fiction book um, and just try it. And hopefully you can send me a picture of it to my phone number um, or post it on YouTube or send it as a Google Doc. I look forward to hearing from you all and I can't wait to keep reading this book. I'm really enjoying it. It's really interesting so far. I'll see you guys in the next video.